Hi everyone, it's Sandy Peckinpah. Whew, I just barely made it. I was in the hot, hot Southern California sun up until just a couple of minutes ago and um, made it back in time for this five o'clock broadcast. I am so grateful that you're joining me and um, we are continuing our conversation today about confidence. And so for those of you joining me, I'm so glad that you've taken time out of your day to have this conversation. Um, hey, Donna, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. You know, I feel so grateful that I've been able to transition this time of broadcasting. I started out on Periscope um, in 2015. 15 I think was when Periscope first began and I was one of the first broadcasters on Periscope because I think it started in April and I started in August and I did like about two or three hundred broadcasts and I realized that it was one of those things that I looked forward to every single day. Not only that, one of the side effects of doing it was that it opened my mind, my brain, my love of researching, my love of writing to expanding and learning more and being able to write about more and being able to speak about more. And so I had this feeling of tremendous growth in those two years that I did nonstop broadcasting. And believe me, it was nonstop. Um, and so I uh, expanded those thoughts and then I started writing a lot. I started writing for um, a platform called Medium and I also started writing for Huffington Post and then um, several uh, platforms on Medium. They have a lot of publications within that website. And I realized that that was where my thoughts were going when I stopped broadcasting. My thoughts were going into those articles. Well, just about uh, two weeks ago, I had this thought when I woke up in the morning that I should be broadcasting again, that I missed the interaction and that I missed my accountability. And for those of you who have creative desires and creative wishes and hopes and dreams, accountability is a huge, huge part of that. And so I hope that you'll continue with me in um, holding me accountable because I've been able to broadcast, um, this is the fourth time this week. And um, we're gonna be continuing today our conversation on confidence and transitions in life and things that we've had to deal with that have chipped away at that confidence, um, beliefs in ourself. And for those of you who are just joining me and don't have a clue as to who I am, I'm Sandy Peckinpah. I'm an author, I'm a writer, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a real estate agent, and I have lived a lot of life. And the thing that I've learned the most from all of those life experiences, some of the most devastating, like we all have in our life, those devastating times, is that my will to survive was greater than I ever imagined. And the things that I can look back on in my past have made me who I am today. And believe me, it was not without kicking and screaming. I didn't want to change. I didn't want to accept. I didn't want to overcome. I didn't want to move forward, but I did. And I'm here to tell you that those are all the things that I write about because I know that every one of us has had a really tough time. Oh, I see Kathy. Welcome, Kathy. Welcome, Linda. So glad you're here. Um, we are continuing our conversation on where lack of confidence comes. Now, I can tell you quite certain that, with quite certainty, that lack of confidence comes whenever one part of our life is about to transition into another, and we are challenged with that transition. We feel not confident, we feel frightened, we feel fear, it challenges our belief about ourselves. We wonder, are we good enough? Are we smart enough? Are we likable enough? Um, are we the right age? You know, 
we all have those moments when our beliefs about ourself are cha- ourselves are challenged. And we talked yesterday about what are beliefs. Well, beliefs are just thoughts that you have. Either you've adopted them from somebody else or you had a thought about yourself. And you have that thought over and over and over again until suddenly it becomes a belief. Now, some beliefs may be true and some beliefs may be false. Those that are holding you back most likely are false because those that are holding you back are the the biggest reason why we don't move forward or take that next step or take that chance or go for that business that we thought we wanted to start or or audition for the play at the local playhouse or um, write a song or record music or talk on YouTube. You know, all of those things require a stronger belief about yourself that no matter what, you will survive. And that's what your life has taught you. That all of the things that you've been through, and they could be terrible, you've somehow transitioned through all of it, and here you are today. Here you are listening to this broadcast. When you take a step forward in trying something new, that is showing your inner resilience that everyone has. Every single person has the ability to be resilient. And as I said yesterday, it's not bouncing back, it's bouncing forward. It's just like the little seed that gets caught in the crack of the cement and suddenly it becomes a flower. How does that happen? Well, it happens because it's a force of nature that is so strong it can't not happen. And that's what's inside of you, is that ability to water the seed of your beliefs and create better beliefs and discharge those that are not worthy, those that have not served you well, those that have hurt you and wounded you and stopped you in your tracks. Those are the beliefs that we want to get rid of. Now I can tell you, even though I did that two years of live stream broadcasting and then I did um, speaking engagements, When I decided to start live stream broadcasting again this week, I was terrified. I thought all day, am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? And finally, I just set a time and I said, I'm going to do it at five o'clock. And then at four o'clock, I was thinking, do I really want to do it? And so I thought, how can I change that? How can I make myself start broadcasting again? And what I did was I posted it on Facebook at four o'clock that I'd be broadcasting at five o'clock. So I had to show up. And sometimes those are the things that we have to do to counteract the beliefs that make us feel like, oh, nobody's gonna show up. Nobody's gonna listen to what I have to say. Why would they? And you know what happened? I got terrific feedback because I took that chance and you have that ability to take one step, one tiny step forward into that area that you feel a lack of confidence. Now, one thing that I talked about yesterday and that I wanted to share with you today is that knowing where you actually feel lack of confidence is the key to understanding it and the key to building confidence. And so you have to define your lack of confidence with asking questions. And so you wonder, where did this lack of confidence come? Now, um, I have some questions for you. So I was, as I was saying yesterday, bring a paper and pencil because I think you might wanna write these down in your journal. Why write them down? Because guess what? What I learned when I was struggling with grief, when I had lost my son, and I struggled with my feelings of grief and fear. Um, I, I learned that journaling, that writing things down, and it's proven, James Pennebaker from the University of Texas did a study on journaling. 
journaling is so beneficial in healing because what it does is it allows your mind to explore your thought it goes from your brain down the end of your pen and I urge you to do it with a pen and paper not the computer it's different it's a different um, mindset that when you do it with your pen it goes out the end of your pen onto the page and lets you rest and that's the beauty of it oh I see my friend Belinda just arrived hi Belinda we just sort of got into the conversation on lack of confidence and building confidence and resilience and um, identifying where the struggle comes from so in defining your lack of confidence you want to ask yourself these questions in what areas do you really not feel good enough you know it could be so many things it could be maybe you you want to sing but you don't feel you're good enough hmm well can we look at that in a couple of ways if you want to sing and you don't feel good enough would it help if maybe you reached out to a vocal coach and practiced or joined a choral group or a singing group as Belinda and I did when and Linda when we were young all of those things offer you an opportunity to explore that lack of confidence the areas that you don't feel confident are the areas that you must care about or you wouldn't feel that you had a lack of confidence. If you didn't have the thought, for example, that you wanted to be a writer, um, then why would you care that you didn't have a, a confidence to be a writer? So I work with a lot of writers on helping them develop their story and their creative patterns in order to allow themselves to write their story. And they all start out with, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough. But how do you know if you're not good enough unless you try? Um, one thing that I've been doing lately, and I recognize how important this is, is that I love doing online classes, exploring coaching, and all of that stuff, because I learn from other people. So I just signed up for a class uh, two days ago and I'm so excited. In fact, I had uh, two hours at a Starbucks today waiting uh, for my son to finish an appointment. And I remember feeling so good that I was learning during this time in Starbucks with my earphones and my computer, taking this course, and how I was expanding on an area that I did not feel confident. And so what did that do? It forced me to take a step forward put down my dollars and sign up for this course. Now, because I had paid for it, I was, you better be sure I'm gonna complete it because I knew it was that important to me that I was willing to pay for it. Um, there's also tons of good information free on the internet, but sometimes you just need that little boost of paying for something that says, okay, I'm really gonna do this because I put my money on it. So. Think about that and write down in your journal in what areas do you actually feel you're not good enough. Those are important areas for you to explore. Number two is why do you feel you're not qualified as others? Could it be lack of experience? Is it that you need to take one more course or hire somebody to help you get better at that? go to school, um, join a group, are those things that you could do that help you feel more qualified. When I started real estate in 2002, and I'll never forget my, my first sale, I felt so stupid. I felt like I was conning this girl into working with me in buying this home. And you know what? She became a very wonderful client, but I was literally scared to death writing that contract. My hand was shaking. Um, this was when we weren't using computers as much too, so I, the contract was printed out and I was handwriting the contract and she noticed my hand shaking. And I had to be honest with her. I said, you know, this is the very first contract I've written and I am scared. And it was terrifying. 
And you know, it felt so good to release that fear because it was a belief about myself that was false, that I wasn't good enough to do this. But once I expressed the fear, I was able to continue forward and she was so supportive of me, so supportive. So remember, if you don't feel qualified, there are things that you can do to get qualified. There are things that you can explore to become more qualified. Another thought is, is there something about your personal appearance that holds you back? Now, I know a lot of people, I was teased unmercifully for having red hair and freckles. I did not feel good about myself in my teens. I did not. And so when I was, and I was teased if starting in fifth grade, I didn't get teased up until fifth grade. And I remember this boy came at me and just called me names and I just ran crying to the bathroom. But sometimes those very things that you're teased for become something that you treasure later in life. And now, um, obviously, I'm still a redhead. Now I need a little help with my beautiful hair technician, but, um, but I'm still a redhead. I still have freckles. I still have fair skin. And those are the things that you know, you learn to love about yourself. And I remember when I had my children and um, I was, I had, you know, gained the weight that all women do when they have, when they're pregnant. And I remember feeling like, wow, my stomach is never going to be the same. And I just had to get to that point that I realized that, um, my stomach was a badge of honor, that those little stretch marks and things that you know, were less than perfect were badges of honor because I had four beautiful children because of it. So if there's something in your appearance that's holding you back from confidence, hey Shirley, so good. You have same freckles and hair, wow. I didn't know that. Um, if there's something about your personal appearance that you have bad feelings about, is that just a belief that is not helpful? If it's a belief that is helpful that maybe your health is in danger, then I urge you to get help. Just like I needed help learning real estate. I needed help with a coach in real estate because I was stuck for a while. You know, all of these things are very helpful in moving you forward and removing the roadblocks, removing the beliefs that do not help you with your confidence. Remove those. And then there's the fourth one. Do you feel undeserving, not worthy? Where did those feelings come from? You know, um, sometimes people have something said to them as a child, something that they never forget, maybe a terrible teacher who wounded them unmercifully. And those kind of things can tend to damage you as a child. But are they really true? Are they really true? Do they continue in life as being true when you're told something and you know and you're a year old or in first grade and you're told something maybe you're held back. You know, are is that true today? No, you're a whole different person. And those things that maybe you were told in a relationship that wasn't so great or, or with friends that were not such good friends, those things are not necessarily true because they were said at a different time in your life and those people were coming from their perspective. People can be so unkind sometimes in youth and they have, they have no idea how damaging it can be. That boy in fifth grade, and I think Linda, no, I don't know if Linda knows who he is. Um, his name was Ricky, Ricky Gacious. And um, when he teased me about my red hair and said that I should, I, he said something horrible, like I'd rather be dead than red. And he had no idea how damaging that was. He was just saying something that likely was repeated. He heard somewhere or something. But 
That doesn't mean that you have to own those words. It doesn't mean that you have to live with what was said forever because those people hurt too. They are hurting too. And they come from a place that you probably don't know. Just push it aside as a belief that is no longer useful to you and soar. Gaining confidence, and we all have that ability to bounce back from whatever was said with us or whatever areas we're not confident in to gain confidence. Gaining confidence is critical to your happiness and critical to your success. If you feel a lack of confidence, it's likely because you want to know more. You wish you would be confident in an area. It's obviously something you care about. And so lack of confidence is a normal and natural reaction to another stage of life. Welcome it. Don't feel bad about it. Look forward to those moments when you say, oh, I'm, I don't know if I'm confident in that and challenge yourself to become more confident. So that is my broadcast today, as I promised you. Um, I'm not 100% sure about tomorrow, but I'm going to try. Oh, Kimbo, welcome. You know what, I'm just wrapping up, but you can do the replay. And if any of you um, know someone that this uh, broadcast would help, please share it. Feel free to share it. I put this um, live stream with Sandy Peckinpah as a public group for a while, not forever, so that we could share if maybe you know someone who is struggling from a lack of confidence or uh, the other things that we've talked about this week. Please feel free and go back and watch the replays because we built on the premise that nothing ever stays the same started out on Monday. Nothing ever stays the same. One thing is certain. Change is inevitable. We all have good times. We all have bad times. We all struggle. We all thrive. And the fact that you are here today means that you are thriving. I so appreciate you being here on this broadcast. I am so grateful. And please join me five o'clock live stream. And I look forward to doing another one and researching it before then. All right, have a great evening.